guess the old stages are still up here as well, Richard. Speak for yourself, Taylor. <laughs> Arsenal have lost to Valencia and Zaragoza on neutral grounds in European finals. They have been beaten by Barcelona at Wembley this season and have drawn in the new Camp. But Deportivo La Coruña are the first Spanish side to visit Highbury in European competition. And Arsenal will certainly want to make their home advantage count tonight. Deportivo have lost their last five away games but they are very strong in their own Riazor Stadium. And it is a, a fascinating pairing in the fourth round of the UEFA Cup because the Spanish side here is the leaders of the Primera Liga. But you look at their record, Andy, and it's only just better than Arsenal's. 49 points from 26 games, that's good enough to give them a six-point lead in Spain. 47 from 26 leaves Arsenal third in England, 10 points behind Manchester United. Well, you've got to wonder whether the big two haven't just let them get away with it. Barcelona and Real Madrid at the top of that league early on in the season, Mark. I'll be interested to see if they can hang on. You know, it's one thing to get top, it's another thing to stay there. Now the lives for both clubs pleasantly complicated by their continuing involvement in Europe in the UEFA Cup. It will be a busy month for the winners over these uh, two legs because they will play again in the following two Thursdays, the last two Thursdays of the month, against either Parma or Werder Bremen, who've had their first leg. That was played on Tuesday, and the Italian club beat the Germans 1-0 in Italy with a goal from Crespo, who came on as a substitute for Argentina last week at Wembley. As for Arsenal, well, they won for the first time in five games here on Saturday against Southampton. Signs that with their injured players coming back, they were looking like their old selves. <laughs> Andy, we've gone down the... Uh, the personnel, what about the planning for the two teams? Well, the planning's going to be interesting, Mark. We'll look at uh, one or two little things that might happen. Again, Arsenal have got to chop and change at the back. The back four that we're so used to seeing play together has been upset again. Luzhny will play centre-back, and they will have to be careful. There is no doubt Mackay is a threat. He may play up on his own, but he's very intelligent, he's very mobile. He will make runs, or try to make runs in behind, down the sides, in between players and he will trouble Keon and Luzhny, but both of those, I think, have the pace to cope with any runs Mackay might make. Behind them, Jalminia we have there. Now, he might just drop off into midfield, but when he gets a chance, and if he can create a little bit of space between these two players, never fear, Jalminia will try and get forward, make runs, and anything round the edge of the box, this lad can be a threat. But midfield may be the key, as it is in an awful lot of these games. It's no doubt... This is a weakened Arsenal midfield, in my opinion, without Patrick Vieira in there. But Grimaldi and Petit will be facing in Flavio and Mauro Silva. Two players that ain't going to do an awful lot, we don't think, that way, Martin. I think they'll probably sit the two Brazilians and try and prompt. But it's wide areas where Deportivo La Coruña have changed. The two wide players at the weekend were probably the weakest. Therefore, Jukanovic has come in on the left. And... Torre Flores on the right, now he's left-footed as you were telling me, but he has got six goals already this season, so he might well be a threat going up against Overmars and Silvino, that'll be interesting. And up front, well, as Graham Souness says, if Bergkamp is on song, particularly early, I always watch Dennis Bergkamp a lot, Mark, if he can get on the ball early and he can prompt, and Henri can attach himself to Donato, who at 37 years of age, I don't think can be the quickest defender around particularly if they can just bring them up the pitch a little. Any space in behind, Henri's threat must be there. Well, each club allowed to name seven subs, only three can be used, except, as we've told you, Tony Adams is there for formalities only and will not be risked. As for the rest of them, well, there's some uh, strong and experienced characters like Nigel Winterburn, Schuker, of course, played for a while in Spain, Ray Pahl has lost his place tonight, and the Carnu factor is on the bench. And the players that Andy mentioned have been left out. Victor and Fran were the wide men against Mallorca 
in uh, the Spanish Primera Liga match in La Coruña on Sunday. Some of you might have seen it on uh, Sky Digital. Are there amongst the substitutes. The Portivo La Coruña kickoff in action on the 94th birthday of the club, founded on March the 2nd, 1906, but it's only their fifth season in European competition. Quick thing, quickly, Martin. I don't know, I think on Saturday against Southampton, did Overmars come on, if I remember, play right side and Jungberg stayed left? Because they've started with Jungberg on the left, Overmars on the right now. You would automatically think that as a left and right footer, respectively, would operate those sides. But maybe they think that Jungberg can attack from out to in from the left and vice versa with Overmars' pace. If he can attach himself to Romero, the number three, and attack him infield instead of down the line. And Asenega might have spotted something he wants to use. Wherever Freddie Jungberg's been performing recently, he's been an outstanding success for Arsenal. He's really settling down to the demands and the standards set by this football club. Maybe the same will apply to Oleg Luzhny, but he's been short of opportunity. He's been given one at the 11th hour tonight. Uh, Deportivo La Coruña have a real reputation for getting early goals in games. They've got three forward at this free kick. Lukanovic, Mackay, and <laughs> they weren't looking for the three in the centre. It was Jalminia, who is a set-piece specialist. Well, that says if he gets round the edge of the box, he'll be a threat, but my goodness, that was ambitious. Just as well David Seaman hadn't edged to his right, as we saw Nigel Martin doing an FA Cup tie for the park, which didn't get done by Carboni. That was the kind of thing that Jalminia was trying to do there. David Seaman will know about uh, Jalminia. He played against England for Brazil in that uh, tournoi in France the year before the World Cup. Almenia actually following in the footsteps of his late father, Jalma Diaz, who helped Brazil beat England in Rio 30 years ago. Quite a footballing family. Donato, who was born in Brazil but has played his international football for Spain, it's a naturalised citizen, he's in the centre of the defence, no change there for Deportivo. Bergkamp looking to have a give-and-go with Arsenal's Brazilian, Silvino. Let's uh, get an early comment from our touchline man, George Gavin. George. Martin, just to emphasise the fact that Tony Adams is on the subs list for official purposes only. He's not there on the bench, he's having a massage in the dressing room. <laughs> Actually, we did see uh, Stephen Hughes here earlier, who is still an Arsenal player, but uh, still very much involved in transfer talks with Everton. So Turu Flores brought in to play on the left. The uh, top scorer for Deportivo La Coruña last season, but he struggled to get a regular place in the side this season with the arrival of Roy Mackay. Great feet, yeah. Romero with a cross. The Spanish club trained here last night we're delighted with conditions as all the uh, visitors are to a uh, hybrid in terms of uh, the playing surface and there was much talk in the deportivo camp about the value of getting an away goal certainly ambitious enough i mean looking across the midfield here we weren't sure what they were going to do mark we, we thought jokanovic would actually play left flores right but flores is playing left jokanovic is actually playing centrally alongside mauro silva and it's Flavio who's playing on the right-hand side. That's lovely control by Thierry Henry. Silvino is very much uh, ahead of Nigel Winterburn now, it seems, because uh, Winterburn has been the left-back in all Arsenal's previous European ties this season. The Champions League campaign, which was frustrating, and the two matches against Nantes, which were very entertaining. Henry in towards Bergkamp and coming in behind was Lee Dixon with a glorious scoring header inside five minutes. That's like waiting for a bus. They haven't scored from free play with a header all season till Saturday. Bergkamp's goal 
Suddenly, the opening moments of the next game, they go and do it again. It's a lovely run from Henri, but I don't think this is good defending, Martin, from their experience in Atto. Look how easy he gets the cross in. He's not pressed enough. Neither is the marking good at the back post, but the Arsenal care, not a jot. What a great finish and a great header from Lee Dixon. Arsenal 1, Deportivo 0. Lee Dixon still going strong in the month in which he celebrates, if that's the right word, his 36th <laughs> birthday. Well, he's taking a leaf out of Tony Adams, but how often in the past has Tony and Skipper come up with a big goal? And it's the standing Skipper who has scored for Arsenal here at a vital early stage. Romero, but where was the marking on Dixon down that left-hand side for the Spanish league leaders? Off goes Henri. Nybet trailing him. Henri's crossed too high for Bergkamp, and here comes Jungberg, it's spat up off the turf. But it's still there for Bergkamp, it's another hit of the goal for Arsenal. Yeah. And Songo caught up in the stress here in the early minutes for Deportivo. Now this is a test now for the Spanish leaders. Shocking away for him, we've already remarked on it, Martin. Arsenal started brightly. And early on, that's all he has got in behind two or three times. It's a, what we thought he'd try and do, and he's done it very well. But I have to say, if you were the coach of Deportivo La Coruña, you'd be really questioning how Donato allowed him to turn so easily. And then again, why Lee Dixon can wander in from right back and get a free header. Six or seven yards from goal. Nybet, the Moroccan who was linked with Manchester United a few months ago. Donato. Manuel Pablo, the right back, is made great progress in that position this season. Jungberg. Getting the better of Flavio. Lushny, Keown being uh, closed down. By uh, Jalminia and Turu Flores. Well, Flores That's good is pressure by Burkamp and Arsenal very quickly at the races here. Petit. Overmars. Harry ahead of it. Now to. Uh, to the left-hand side that maybe attracted the Dutchman's eyes, including Dennis Bergkamp. Goes left now to Silvino. Petit. Bergkamp, Jungberg, Silvino, real sharpness from the Gunners. Oh, cross it. Corner. Why not cross it? We're heading goals for fun, Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> that was the old cross, the low driven one that... Silvino tried, they had a lovely opportunity, they worked the space really well. Look, he's got a chance to deliver, three bodies there, stretched across the six-yard box. And Silvino, who crossed for Bergkamp, said Andy quite right in what he said a moment or two ago about the lack of headed goals from free play for Arsenal at Highbury. They've rediscovered the knack. stayed back on the cover. Dixon, flag has gone up. The officials, incidentally, all tonight come from Bulgaria, headed by referee Atanas Uzunov. Nybet. Now it's over. What a tower of strength he was for Brazil in those World Cup finals of 94. Had a lot of fitness problems since then. Just like Brazil always seem to pull a player like that out, Mark, don't they, Mario yeah. Silva? Like in 98 would be Dunga, wouldn't it? With a flat kind of There's always somebody who's un Brazilian like, but just sits there in the midfield, just digs in. He's uh, well outside the penalty area at the moment as uh, Deportivo have a free kick again. 
short side cleared by Petit. Very important for Arsenal, particularly having scored, to now make sure that part of their concentration here is on keeping a clean sheet. And the beauty of an early goal in Europe, Martin, is you don't go, have to go chasing the game now. You can play controlled football. I think they should certainly keep playing the way they're doing when they haven't got the ball. They've pressed it really well. They've forced Macaronia into mistakes. That should certainly continue, but they know they don't have to get anxious and searching for a goal. What is so fascinating about this matchup is that Deportivo's home form is splendid, and Arsenal's away record <laughs> over the last two or three months has been very much below the standards expected. And this is just the first half of the drama on a much smaller pitch than the teams will encounter in Spain next Thursday. Flavio, well, Keown's header. That could have been a little bit worrying for Arsenal. There wasn't much place on the ball. Keown couldn't add any of his own. It's a very swirling wind here, unlike a lot of the modern grounds, Mark, that are enclosed. Highbury isn't. And that was a very threatening ball towards uh, Turu Flores from Jalminia. Well, that he's... left foot again of his. He stayed a threat, Flores, he's played very high up the pitch. He is a striker, really, yeah. who will do a job on the left of midfield. He's a bit unlucky there, and I tell you what, Lee Dixon did not do a good job of messing him up at the back post. Not sufficiently enough to give away a penalty, but enough, I think, just to put Flores off. we told that Lee Dixon was 50-1 to one to score the first goal. Players, of course, are not allowed to bet on themselves, as uh, Steve Claridge is finding out at the moment. Case to answer. But anyone that's supporting Dixon tonight will have made themselves a pretty penny. Offside. Close that. A little bit more angle on the ball would have been interesting. Nybet. It's easily spotted by Petit, but then he didn't to complete the interception. Keown with the header. Kanovic, back to Nybet, Flavio, Jalminia again, Manuel Pablo, with a deep cross, and again uh, Deportivo getting plenty of players forward, this is Turu Flores, and uh, Jungberg takes a safe way out, even though it's at the cost of a corner, sure what was behind him. Donato making his way up. Towards the near post, Tor Jakanovic is in there as well, and David Seaman found that coming a bit quicker than he expected, not the uh, follow-up header though. Yeah, the follow-up header wasn't a great one, but I think this is a measure of this wind swelling about this ground, he's unsure, and he doesn't want to catch it, he wants to risk dropping it down in front of him. Turu Flores. Well, there's talent out there, Martin. You can see it even in this what, opening 13 minutes of the match. It may be a goal down, but Arsenal really have to be disciplined and vigilant at the back. And you pointed out, Andy, the uh, absence of Vieira in midfield, suspended for picking up three yellow cards in this uh, tournament. Uh, some players on the brink. Of, uh, a punishment which might cost them a berth in the second leg of this tie. Oh. Oh, he, now the referee's gone against him. Tony Adams is out now on the bench. I wonder if he's got his boots on. Massage, relax in the evening, watch Arsenal win, that's what Tony will be thinking. Antonio Flores blocked by Dixon and then a deflection off the referee that helped the Spanish side. Romero. Back with Nybet, who missed some football for his club recently, playing for Morocco in the African Nations Cup. Romero, a driven cross. And Turu Flores, nicely laid back to him by Roy Mackay. 
That was a great lay off, Mark. I tell you what, it was a horribly difficult ball to deal with. And you know, you watching a front man, the touch back from Mackay was quality. That's an awfully difficult ball to control, and he set it down absolutely brilliantly. It's a touch high, but this is a goal. Cross comes in too easy, but look at the space that Lee Dixon finds himself in. Absolutely bare at the back post. Flores trying to get back, but couldn't do it. Well, uh, the left back, Romero, had been sucked in with Bergkamp. That to the cross took him out of the equation. And the man who should have been uh, there, Turu Flores, wasn't. Lee Dixon, 1 0 Arsenal. Score on the ball with a pass towards Bergkamp. Delightful control and so nearly a second, and what a goal that would have been. Well, Sublime must, skill. Must have been borderline offside. He went a little early, Bergkamp then checked back. And I wondered whether he was just ahead of play. You could see him suddenly checks, then the ball's delivered. That check just kept him on side. He's a little unlucky, he needed two touches, Martin, for it to come down. Great effort nonetheless. Young back. Dennis Bergkamp, it seems, will not play in the second leg because of his fear of flying. Well, they'll miss skill like this. Cushioned it, then he just, again on the head. It just made it awkward, a little bit high when he had to take it, but he knew he had to take it early, otherwise it would have been blocked. Oh, there's Arsene Wenger, I'd be looking at the ferries across the Bay of Biscay to that northern Spain coast, but uh, it seems Bergkamp at the moment not scheduled for the second game. Romero. Gets uh, another bite at it, Opster laid off to Turu Flores. Turning Dixon, beating Grimondi, brilliant play. It's blocked by Keogh, and that was uh, worthy of Bergkamp from Turu Flores for Deportivo. Flavio, this is a very, very promising beginning to the game. And that's reflecting the way both sides have started. Uh, an advantage played by the Bulgarian referee after a flattening foul by Flavio Concesao. That's good refereeing, Mark. Very good refereeing. That's part of the skill of Mara Silva, the ability to read the play and cut Arsenal off in uh, midfield. Keown. Jokanovic, a bit speculative, and it uh, was shrewd as well. Offside given against Mackay. Tell you what, Flores might have been missing at the back post for the goal, but when he's on the ball, I mean, they're almost buying tickets to get back in here. Lee <laughs> Dixon, I think, and... Grimondi. Grimondi, look at this. Great feet. Well, talk about the quality of the refereeing, he didn't forget the foul. The official from Bulgaria, from uh, Flavio. And when play stopped... Caution was administered. <laughs> Silvino, Jungberg. Grimondi is for. Score, of course, uh, in not. Third round for Arsenal. Jungberg. Where is he going to go here? Well, Bergkamp was just checking out for a cutback, and now uh, and the ball was taken away from the Swede. Dennis Bergkamp went across and has earned Arsenal a corner. Yeah, I'm not so sure he had a good picture here, but again, the marking is absolutely shocking. Look at Freddie Youngberg, the space he has in the middle of the 18-yard box. Not so sure he quite knew what he was attempting to do. Keown must have got the final touch because it's the goal kick that's been given. Yeah, Mauro Silva on the back post, so I think this suggests that he was quite comfortable, it was going wide, doesn't move, look at him, stood on the post, untroubled by the header. Oh, blame it was close. <laughs> it's Jod Katz from Brazil yeah. and you know your geometry. Yeah. <laughs> and a World Cup with his medal. Oh, well, that's it. Teru Flores. Run from Romero. 
feeling in the Arsenal camp was that Deportivo would come here and get plenty of players behind the ball. It hasn't been the case, and here's Flavio with a looping header. It's going to go wide of David Seaman's goal, but Deportivo have uh, begun brightly. And the only sour note, apart from conceding the goal, the booking for Flavio Concesao. Copa America winner last summer. We've seen that on Sky Sports, I'm sure. This is Javier Irureta, his second season as Deportivo's coach. And as a player, he won half a dozen caps for Spain back in the uh, mid-70s. From what I've seen early on in this match, you can see why this team are so good. Elvamar's just getting a bit of treatment there. They're so good at home, Martin, because they've got such quality players, and you can imagine that when they get ahead of steam up and the supporters get behind them, and La Coruña, they really would test a lot of teams, but also the defending as well doesn't look great to me. They don't look completely sure at the back. And that's probably why they're weak for this lack of at home. Mallorca had some chances against them on Sunday. Bergkamp. He hasn't given it up, Dennis Bergkamp. That's another Arsenal corner. Good throw with Ross Cause. Nybet suggesting there that this should have been a free kick. I think it's Nybet who goes and he thinks he's in control, but that was a great retrieve from Berkamp. He was always getting pressured out of it at the end. Lovely little one-two played. But as he turns in, it was always getting closed out. Overmars incidentally has come back on. to crosses, whether from dead balls or from free play. That was Henri. Nelson Wenger. Very conscious that Arsenal have also got their league priorities. We talk about Deportivo and their search for their what will be their first Spanish league title. Realistically, would be eyeing second place. The two voices here on Saturday were saying, "Well, we'd like to see Manchester United beat Liverpool <laughs> on Saturday morning." Also coming up for you on Sky Sports. That is giving it up, but isn't it? <laughs> not going to name names, of course not. <laughs> we expect you to, sir. Jokanovic, Chalminia. Seen as uh, fellow rivals for that uh, silver medal, if you like, in the Premiership. <laughs> and we won't be allowed to get away with the ball there. It's Jokanovic. We're halfway through the first half. And it's uh, a riveting contest. In the context of the UEFA Cup. Arsenal with the early advantage, but Deportivo already showed they are coming here devoid of attacking ambition. Mauro Silva, headed away by Dumondi, a very useful, versatile performer for Arsene Wenger. Back by Donato. Kick to uh, Deportivo against Grimondi. Whether Jalminia will think that this is within the range of his extravagant Brazilian skills. Well, Roberto Carlos would, I know that much. He would be shooting from there. Fabio is there as well, and he has a go. Oh, and my goodness, David Seaman. Had to deal with not just the pace, but for some movement, some swerve of the ball as well. He's parried it away to safety. I think that got deflected, Mark. They certainly looked it to me. And that's what made it difficult. What a strike, though. Teru Flores, Romero, Mackay in the penalty area. Flavio arriving as well. And 
Jungberg having to defend. Silvino. Do you feel Arsenal have got a sharp cutting edge, but they can't get the ball as often as they would like at the moment? Tiru Flores. Knocked off by Jokanovic. I think all he's down far side as well. And the challenge hasn't got up. so Thierry Henry can get some treatment. But the free kick, well, you pose the question, would Jalminia fancy it? He didn't. There's a deflection off the head of... Manu Petit. Manu Petit. Goalkeeper's going to his right suddenly. Has to go back to his left. Much has been said, Andy, of David Seaman, uh, mm. particularly coming up to the Liverpool game when we were here a couple of weeks ago. Maybe his talents were on the way, and he played very well in that game. Didn't have too much to do for England against Argentina. But he made one or two important contributions in the win over Southampton on Saturday. And goalkeepers <laughs> sometimes uh, need opportunities to make those sort of match-turning saves. Well, I think David's... Well, Arsenal have played 41 games. This is the 41st game this season, Mark, and David's... Only played in this. This is the 21st game he's played in. So, so he's goal... fourth of Arsenal in nine European games. Yeah, so he, he, goalkeepers more than any position, I guess, need to play. I'm not having that was a shot. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, he was born in Brazil. <laughs> I'm not having that was a shot. Donato. He's just jogged back on. Good news for Arsenal. Mara Silva, Jokanovic. First time from Flavio. In behind the Arsenal back line. Mackay is a, a real predator. And of course, is a, a challenger to Dennis Bergkamp in the Dutch national squad. Very humble challenger, I might say, full of respect for well, he's in the opposing ranks tonight and on the ball here. Silvino. It's been a good day already for the other English representative in the UEFA Cup. Leeds getting a goalless draw away to Roma. Martin's had a shutout in this competition. Arsenal will be delighted if David Seaman can do the same. Jalminia. Luzhny. Thanks of European experience, of course, with the team of Kiev, his previous club. And also with Monaco in particular. Petit. So, uh, Bergkamp. And Overmars was in so much space for Bergkamp's right. And we're not half Mark Romero had been sucked in again. And to be fair to Bergkamp, he saw him, he had a picture of all good players. He knew exactly where Overmars was before the ball arrived at his feet. Bergkamp. Here's Overmars now. Only Henri in the centre for Arsenal. Yeah! Brilliant. That's brilliant football. Started inevitably with the ability of the Dutchman and Dennis Bergkamp to wait, to wait, and then deliver it right on cue so that Overmars can look up and worry about crossing. Look at Overmars, have a little look. He doesn't need to control the ball. Neither does Henri. It's a brilliant near post run and a beautiful clinical finish. That's a fantastic goal. High class at Highbury. Here's Grimondi. We stressed earlier on how important it was for Arsenal to grasp the metal here 
in the home leg. And Overmars slips the hapless Romero. Grimondi, Bergkamp just checking away. One touch to control. There's the shot. And Songo strong enough to make sure that it didn't get the better of it. Well, that's a great save. It's near course from the acceptance the saver. But Arsenal are really hot at the moment. Wonderful strike from Dennis Bergkamp, right foot or left, it doesn't matter to this player, he'll take it anywhere. Necessarily with luck when you have the ball here, Mark, but when it's coming to midfield areas where they've got the threat and the talent, they've really pressed the ball well and made players play quickly. Flavio. Kanovic. Mara Silva. Calminia. The right back. Grimondi got to the ball. Bergkamp's pass. Oh, he's got no real support here, not yet. Still not. And having to hold it up. And have the challenge to get to him. Chanelinia. He has got breathtaking skills here. The thing that's really held him back has been uh, an explosive temperament. Jungberg, Costco's uh, Donato. He was here in England in Euro 96 with Spain. and uh, indicating the self-belief in the Arsenal ranks at the moment. Grimaldi. That's a bit more hopeful from Romero. He's played better balls than that forward. Again, we can't stress too highly from Arsenal's point of view reports of not conceding what would be an away goal for the Spanish club. Aro Silva, Flavio. That's uh, room here for Bergkamp, and that means problem for Deportivo. Telling Bergkamp to get up and get on with it. Not that he played for the foul. No disrespect to the Champions League, which of course has a, a great imprint on the European scene, but this uh, nature of the two-legged contest and the balance that can change so quickly an away team score, even when the home side are doing so well as Arsenal are in this match. I think that's absolutely right. 2 0 up, and Arsenal fans will think, oh, this is a cruise, we're in here. And not a lot of work to be done in this match before it's won. It'll take a lot of winning. As poor as they've been away, we've talked about it time and time again, pre-match and even in the last half hour, as poor as they've been away, Arsene Wenger knows that their home form is exceptional. Jalminio. Kanovic and now Romero came on for Spain as a substitute against Croatia eight nights ago. 
and his first taste of international football with his country. Yeah, he's playing that night for England against Argentina. Shot by Gialminia, all left foot, but what a left foot. Gives us a little opportunity to look at this wonderful goal. Look at the way Bearcamp just waited, Mark. He waited until the time was right. That was a great ball. That was a great ball. And well, the pace of Henri, even over short distances, was just too much for Donato. Thierry Henri at the moment is Arsenal's outright leading scorer with 12 goals. He's gone one ahead of Davor Schuker. Sanu and Overmars also in double figures for the Gunners this season. And Overmars, half his ten goals have come in European competition. <laughs> Petit and Silvino. Keeping it a little too short, maybe there. There's plenty of pressure on them. In that part of the pitch. Petit, who is uh, well known for his sportsmanship, putting the ball out. Well, you can see what a good decision again it is, Martin. I mean, the linesman. Was right beside him, and I think that's good. All three officials are working well together, you know. The referee was a long way away from that. He didn't make any rash decision, he just looked over at his linesman, flag stayed down, and he was quite happy to get on with it. And if you see the replay, you can understand why. Just went to ground far too easy for me. To the throw and went to a Deportivo teammate, but Roy Mackay was tuned in. And he knocked it out. Arsenal entitled to get the throw after the T's gesture. Hesitation here, Songo wasn't sure quite what Romero had in his mind. Overmars is down, it was a nice challenge from Jukanovic. The win now to the sales of the Arsenal man. Yeah, nothing sinister, he just tried to let the ball go. He wasn't going to play it over Mars, he thought he could just let it drop in between two players and spin away from them. Jokanovic just up he comes, takes it out. Nothing sinister there, no free kick. Just gets caught. In the Coming up for you on Friday. Sky Sports 2 and Sky Sports Extra Stockport going so well in the shadow of the Manchester clubs against Dave Bassett's Barnsley. I'm talking Manchester clubs as a small matter of a game at Old Trafford on Saturday morning. We started 11, Manchester United against Liverpool. Ten years since Liverpool last beat United at Old Trafford. Not for the first time tonight, in need of some attention from uh, Gary Lewin off the pitch. Dalmini <laughs> letting it run. Romero. <laughs> by Jokanovic. Dalmini <laughs> Flavio. That's a terrific change of direction. And that might be a free kick. Ken Jalminia instantly going across. Arsenal wanting to get over Mars back on. That was dangerous. One thing you know about this side, Martin, and even in the bits you've seen, if people haven't seen a lot of them, when they, if they put it all together, there'll be a threat. There's no doubt about that. They've got that ability. And if they put a move together, Arsenal really have to be wary. And especially, you feel, the free kicks. And this is not an inviting angle. But nonetheless, I'm sure Jalminia is going to be in immense danger here. 
And he put it into the area where Turu Flores, if he'd got a stronger contact there, that could have been the away goal they're searching for. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's too high. I'll tell you what. My first reaction was he should score from that. It's a brilliant ball in. Uh, maybe oh, I don't know. Five yards, six yards out. Didn't look too high. Just didn't get enough. Let it brush his forehead. They do have a, a strong South American core. Spanish club. Brazilian taking the free kick and Argentine trying to. Uh, Turn it in with his head. This is an African involvement with a Nybet here. That's a searching ball. Lushny had to fill in for Adams in that central defensive position there a couple of times already this season. And he's uh, not been found wanting. Petit. Between them, Bergkamp and Petit getting the better of Jalminia. Overmars with a chance to motor for Bergkamp. Out comes the goalkeeper. And well read by Songo. Brilliant goalkeeper. Absolutely top class. Sensed the danger. Knew he had to deal with it. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with the ball through to Bergkamp. Bergkamp's pace, not often mentioned, but it was enough. And he was on to this. Well, that's great goalkeeping. Good starting position. Made a decision, and it was a good one. Bergkamp. Henri diving in. Missed it. Diving or falling. <laughs> There's a little smile over and a little thumbs up. A beautifully inviting cross. I'm not so sure it was a fall rather than a dive. Jungberg. Pablo. Overmars. Well, oh, he's got beyond Romero again. Jungberg in the middle this time, but not at the near post area. This time, Donato was able to make an interception. Toru Flores. Good pressure. Yeah, it's fabulous. That's, that's been just typical of Arsenal. It's been a major difference between the two teams. Arsenal have done far, far better when they haven't had the ball. Flavio. And Silvino getting in and getting the deflection as well. Good, good little contest, that. Flavio's got the ability to really test Silvino. No doubt in my mind of that. We haven't seen from Silvino, Arsenal's Brazilian, since he's been here, is a free kick. Is he the only Brazilian who doesn't want to shoot? <laughs> no, Dunga was one, I remember. <laughs> I've seen him hit one or two as well, but I know what you're saying in free play, he, uh, held back. Lundberg, who's been amongst the goals, five in his last nine games, two here against Southampton. One, a most unlikely one, given to him through the honesty of Patrick Vieira. Sure many of you saw it, Vieira said he didn't touch it. He's been a striker, I think. I've had a, another opinion on the matter. It's gone down as Jungberg's goal. And it was a decisive one, really, as Southampton had hit back to 2-1. There's no way back from 3-1. I think that was a big result in the context of tonight's game, Martin. I think if they... At 2-1, you wondered whether Southampton could get back in it at 2-2. I think if they had it done, Arsenal might have come into this game a little less confident than they did do it was a big match for Arsene Wenger Saturday I think he knows it and I think they've taken the confidence of that result into the opening half hour of this game it started really well Romero all right oh and I bet just got there the second time Having lost out first up for the Frenchman Flores. A chance for Makai, who is quick to show his pace against Keown, of course. 
who is not often found wanting when it comes to a race. He's a little unlucky, Mackay, he did well. Keown is pretty quick, we talk about it often. Mackay was up to it, it was a little unfortunate, he lost his balance. Roy Mackay, incidentally, does have a, a long time ago Scottish ancestry. And he is a Dutchman. And now making a real name for himself in Spanish football. Romero, Jokanovic. Been the uh, really intriguing factor of it that Deportivo, even at 0 0, and it wasn't that for long, were looking to come here and make an imprint on the scoreline and not have a holding operation in their minds. Over Marks. Flavio, Mauro Silva quickly on the scene. Delminia. to intercept it. Grimondi strong there when Arsenal needed him to be against Turu Flores. Keown only clears it against Overmars. <laughs> Hits his three out and gives him a rocket. Not getting out of the way. Mackay again looking unselfishly to a supporting player. He certainly played his part, he hasn't uh, missed too much. Atanas Uzanov. Petit with the free kick. Just, uh, just put Bergkamp through uh, the centre on his own. He'll be concentrating on the... Uh, Getting their defensive organisation right here in stoppage time. Not punctured before the break, but Turu Flores going in and uh, Dixon needing great determination then. Some sort of aggression for the ball that he showed when he gave Arsenal the lead in the fifth minute, covering a lot of ground to score with a far post header from Henri's cross, and it was Henri who collected the second himself. When Overmars did the work down the right-hand side, so far so good for Arsenal. They lead the Spanish league leaders here in the UEFA Cup by two goals to nil. Plenty of smiles at Highbury. They'll be delighted with that Arsenal. As Martin said, two nil at half-time. The thoughts of Alan Smith and Graham Sinness very shortly now. Before the end of the programme, highlights from Leeds match in Italy today. But uh, half-time next, and a look back at that first 45 minutes. here tonight well you wanted to Alan by the end of 90 minutes you've got them at the end of 45 so what from here well I wouldn't be uh, surprised the way Arsenal are playing for them to add to that um, it's just whether Deportivo decide to uh, do a bit of damage limitation but you know with the tempo the way Arsenal have started the game it really caught the Spanish on the back foot and they, they couldn't handle it um, as Graham said, I mean, everything was going through Bergkamp at the start and he's been in tremendous form for the first 45 minutes. And is it simply for them now, Graham, damage limitation? Or do they have no, something more to no, offer? No, they have a chance. I mean, at 2-0, their manager, their coach will be telling them, hey, we've got a goal here. 2-1 here is not a bad result. And, I mean, if Arsenal go after them, kicking into the north bank, their favourite end, if they go after them this half, they'll get more goals. I mean, I think they've played it just right. They've been good going forward and defensively they've been very solid. They've seen more of the ball in terms of possession than Arsenal. Is that significant? Uh, no, if you're two down. <laughs> yeah. Not if you're two down. As long as having the ball in areas, you want them to have the ball in. I mean, Arsenal, you know, with Andre with his pace up front, they won't mind them having possession of the ball on the halfway line and trying to suck them in and then hit them on the break with the way at, the way the, the, the pace they have in the team and the cuteness this man has. And he's, 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 he's had a fabulous game. He's had yeah. a fabulous. Great game. start, wasn't it? The early goal from Dixon. He's well, been at the heart of everything there, Dennis Bergkamp. Just what they needed, that first goal from Lee Dixon, and just set them on the track, but... Uh, John Robertson here. Yeah. John Robertson look all right. He's got some skill, hasn't he? <laughs> I mean, they had the odd skirmish, didn't they? They had that header. And 
They don't seem to be able to cope with these balls coming into the box from Arsenal, though. They don't seem to be marking that tightly off corners, especially. But they've been quality balls from Bergkamp over on that left-hand side. I mean, great balls. But I think, you know, we talked before the game about European Knights being special. And this is a special night for Dennis. He's relishing this. Something a wee bit different. And um, he's been the star of the show so far. And we talk about door openers. He's been that. He's been that with this pass alone. Mm. You know, he's waited and waited and said, go on, go for it. I know you're quick. And they just the weight of the pass and everything was perfect. Great finish. Super goal. Down to Dennis, the main man. Great ball, wasn't it? Just on to check his stride. Just looks up, squares it, makes it look easy, but not, not an easy goal that. And he's, look at his touch here. But either for Wallop. So we save that. And the manager will be saying what, Alan? Because it's nothing like half time in terms well, of the tie Wenger. yet, is it? Arsene Wenger. Yeah. Well, I think more of the same. There's not a lot, not a lot of faults he can pick out there. You know, they, they've had a couple of skirmishes, as I say, but they have defended well as a whole. Arsenal. Lushny's done well there alongside Keown. He's not had too many worries. You'd only see the worry. The only worry there defensively would have been that ball in we just we just saw replayed there, where the guy gets should have had a clear header at goal mm. and it glanced off his head. He wouldn't be happy with that. Other than that, Arsenal have, have done everything really right. I think it's concentration, really right. isn't it, from here on in. The game should be won at this stage, but uh, it'd be nice to add to that tally, but at the same time, they don't want to concede that away goal, and then the trip to Spain becomes that little bit more tricky. 2-0 to the Arsenal. Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind, reckless, thoughts are feeling endless. So 2-0 to the Arsenal at Highbury, worth just mentioning, don't forget Saturday morning, Manchester United and Liverpool, but um, right now it's UEFA Cup action, fourth round, first leg tie at Highbury, match commentators Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thank you very much Richard, Arsenal have never beaten a Spanish club in Europe, they lost that final in 1980 on penalties to Valencia in Brussels, they lost the final to Zaragoza in Paris in 1995. And this season in the Champions League, they drew in Barcelona, but lost, of course, at Wembley. Andy, what about their approach to the second half? Uh, keep the foot on the accelerator or concentrate on making sure there is a naught after Deportiva La Coruña on the scoreline after 90 minutes? Well, if you were asking me what I'd have been saying in there, that would be exactly that. That would be, I don't care what our score says at the end of it, I want it to say Deportivo zero mm. at the end. I think that would be... The most important thing for Arsene Wenger to have said, if a third goal comes, good and well, Martin, take it. But at 2-0, it's a wonderful platform for them to go on in this, not only this second half, but the second leg next week. But make sure you don't concede. But if that is the policy, and there's a, a good argument for it, Arsenal will have to defend well against the side that have shown the Attacking variety and capabilities in the first half. But defensive vulnerabilities. Silvino. The trip by Donato. On Bergkamp. His tally of goals for the Gunners to 75 with that header on Saturday against Southampton. This is his first goal for his club for three months. He takes the free kick. Donato. Well, Pablo. To the 37 year old. Kalimic coming to get involved. And, uh, Arsenal didn't have to press very hard to force the error that time. by Overmarks, forward by Dixon, and the only is flagged offside. What a volley ball that was from Lee Dixon, eh? We know only just a yard offside, but 
beautifully played by Lee Dixon. Cincinnati delighted at Clever taking up their option on his services for another season. Silva having to stretch Giannini deep and uh, not effective. Henri. Overmars taking it on. A little disappointed that his fellow Dutchman went for goal then. I think that was ambitious. It was a great little take from Overmars on the edge of the box from Henri, but he thought he might have stood it up back post. by Flavio. A slice on the clearance by Seaman, collected by Maro Silva. Distinctive broad shoulders. Romero. Mikanovic just getting in behind Grimondi into some space. at a slower tempo to suggest that Arsenal may be looking to be a bit more economical in their play. They've certainly got the pace to work on the counter-attack if they want to draw Deportivo forward. I, would, I wouldn't suggest Omar is camping on the edge of your own box and saying, OK, we're 2-0 up and Break we'll down. take yeah, we'll take what you can give us because they have got players that can work very well in confined spaces, you know, Flavio, Jalminho, and we've already seen the quick feet of Flores once or twice in the first half, so would just be inviting a little bit of trouble if they were to do that. I think they've still got to go and search for other goals without over committing. That's the key. Yes, it's a balancing act. Mm. And, uh, delighted to be in the position to have to come up with that sort of balance. And by the first half goals from Dixon and Henri. One thing also they won't want to do is give away any free kicks in the range of uh, Jalminia. So quick football matches can change, Martin, when you're in such control. Is it one mistaken tackle, missed tackle at the edge of your own box, and up steps Jalminho and smashes in top corner. Suddenly there's a whole new view on this game. 2 0 is a great result, 2 1 there. Uh, oh. In no means so good. I'm uh, almost tempted to say that that would uh, give Bruno uh, the advantage for the second game, and a home 1 0 win would take them through. I mean, we're almost sitting here in a game with quite a lot of it to go, almost a game and a half, and you and I can sit here and say next goal might just decide this tie. <laughs> it's a daft thing to say, but you can you just can't imagine Arsenal throwing away a three-goal lead. Comes Grimondi, his defensive knows for danger important there, but it's gone behind for the corner. comes Nybet. Kanovic is the other tall player in there, the number 24. It's over him. Touched away by Petit and then by Jungberg. Jungberg was actually the furthest forward for Arsenal when he received the ball. He was looking for support from behind. Mara Silva. A fine tackle by Grimaldi. Oh, and it's overcooked by Bergkamp. He knew it. As soon as he hit it, he put his hands to his head. He's apologising to the young Frenchman. And that was it. It was tailor-made from there. Deportivo high up the pitch. Bergkamp with the ball. Only running on. And that's a mistake by Martin Keogh. I wonder if he'll get booked for that. Well, if he does, he'll miss the second leg. Well, the cards are out, man. That's a blow, you know, I tell you. Talked about Tony Adams is maybe not as important in this game, but certainly seven days from now, Adams' presence would be absolutely invaluable. Now he's lost his sidekick, who you'd think would have played alongside him, well, you know would have done. So that gives us and Wenger a problem. That's his own mistake here, and that he was trying to rectify. He was quite entitled 
to produce the card. And not only is it a booking, of course, we talked about the danger of free kicks. Although this is not the best angle to suit Jalminia. Oh, we've seen Flavio's right foot work yeah, pretty yes. well first half. And we're making another card come out if we're not careful, Arsenal. Just got to watch. Alberg wants to be the charger here. He's the one who's most reluctant to go. There's Flavio. <laughs> oh, the Overmars was turning his back then. I wouldn't have blamed him if he did. Although it's not the done thing. No. <laughs> as long as you get something in the way of it, it's accepted, yes. I guess, then. But I don't think you'd be queuing up your volunteer to go in that wall, would you? So we're trying hard to work the numbers board. This is Victor, who was in the team starting 11 against Mallorca, former Real Madrid player. Comes on for Jokanovic. Now, I think that from what we've seen, Victor will probably come right-hand side and Flavio will move into the central area alongside Mauro Silva. That's exactly what's happened. Well, that just be bad news for Arsenal. This was a talented player. But, uh, as far as the Champions League final with Real Madrid when they beat Juventus in Amsterdam, he was a substitute not used there. He's uh, mixed it in good company before. Put it on by Toru Flores, Keown, Mackay. And uh, the pass for it's Flavio Cotis out. The penalty has been given. Arsenal protests, but they won't change the mind of the referee. I think he's conned the ref, I have to say. I've not got a great view of it, Martin, but we saw Flavio go down without much contact, way on the far side, first half. And he's gone down again. Jungberg's absolutely furious. He's saying he didn't touch him, does he? Well, not to me, not to me. He's got the ground very, very easily here. Down he goes, oh my goodness. Referee's quite a way away. A little look from Flavio, so he never got it. He did. Card's coming out again. Freddie Jungberg. Well, we've talked about how quickly things can change in these uh, contests, particularly with an away goal. And that's here for the taking for Jalminia from the penalty spot. And uh, oh, he's brilliant. completely full, David Seaman. Brilliant. 2-1. That's brilliant. I remember Dwight York doing something similar in a league match a couple of years ago when he was at Aston Villa to David Seaman. That's, uh, that's confidence, that's supreme confidence. But it's incredible, five minutes ago you and I were saying the next goal might win this tie. Does it go 3-0 or does it go 2-1? Well, that question's been answered. Arsenal are in a game now. Uri Retta, the Deportivo La Coruña coach, has got the away goal that he was talking about last night. I actually think the referees had a decent game up to then. I think he's made one bad decision. I think that was it. It's not easy. You know how extravagant the falls are of the South Americans. What it was was very good play by Mackay to yeah. slip the ball through to Flavio, got behind Freddie Jungberg. I actually thought it was a free kick before that all of all, Martin. It was a very... Jalminia jumped right into... Uh, I think it was Martin Keown. And I thought it was a free kick edge of the box for Arsenal. It wasn't given. And here's Victor. Across comes Luzhny on the lunge. Victor keeps the ball in play. And that was Mackay. Well, yeah, suddenly from... A noise of confidence around Highbury and some anxious noises coming from the terraces and Arsenal look less than happy at the back and it's the noise from that little pocket of fans in the corner. Jungberg. How will Arsenal react here? They feel that they were the victims of an injustice with the award of the penalty. Keo. Oh, the referee's gone across. He's yeah, gone to Bukin now. 
Is he? Yes, he is. Does that mean Jalminho misses the next leg? It does. And he knows it. He does know it. And that's a huge blow. That is a massive blow. To Deportivo. A little tug in the shot might suggest he's a little hard done by. But I think following closely on the back of the penalty decision, Mark, there's influence the referee. Jalminho is furious. He's still having a go at the referee. He was quite unlucky. a long way away, he was a long the way assistance away. on this near side. You can see quite clearly he got his shirt tugged. For Jungberg, incidentally, it's his second European yellow card. Looked after the penalty award and his comments on it. Burkamp. The space here for Jungberg. Petit wants it rolled in, Phil, that's not on. And the Jungberg turned uh, into trouble. And off goes Mackay, and it needs uh, the appreciation of the danger there from Dixon, which was of a high order. Now we've got a new for a cup tie here, there's absolutely no doubt about that. That goal is just given. Deportivo had just such a, shot, such a short injection of pace. Suddenly they're skipping about the pitch. They've got a belief again that wasn't there five or ten minutes ago. But an instant half, Martin. They talked about Jalminho and Keown on the edge of the box. Now watch Martin Keown here as he goes up for this. Now look at Jalminho. I mean, that's a free kick to me. He's just jumped into Keown and suddenly Mackay was able to slip it through. Look at that. I mean, that's extravagant in the least. Freddie Youngberg has got to clear his mind of that, and now you do feel Aston may well need a, at least one more goal here. They'd love to do in the second half what they did in the first and score twice. But it's not been a, a good second half for them by any means. The loss of Keogh for the next leg. Even uh, counteracting that with the Jaminho's subsequent suspension as well. Oh, but Bearcat's not going, is he? Oh. Now, oh, Grimondi is down, and this hot-tempered Brazilian is in the middle of a flashpoint again. And all eyes turn to the referee from Bulgaria. Jalminia still trying to explain why he lost his cool. Grimondi was uh, the Arsenal player who, uh, I think, it seemed to be, was on the receiving end, but was he involved in provoking the retaliation? Well, cards are coming out, there's no doubt about that. But what colour, Mark? It'll be yellow for Grimondi. Okay. And second, it must be red for second yellow. Jalminho. Off he goes, Jalminho. Fifteen stormy minutes in the second half at Highbury. And a different dimension to this fascinating contest between Arsenal and the Spanish league leaders. What do you make of that, Mr Gray? Well, I have to say, that's a free kick from behind, it's a booking in normal from Grimaldi. That's a reaction. If you're asking me, is it another yellow card? I think he's unlucky again, I have to say. It's handbags. His career has been riddled with red cards. Such a talent. Explosive with the ball, but explosive inside his head sometimes. I think he's unlucky, I have to say. He's unlucky with the first booking, he got pulled. Referee didn't see it, gave him a yellow card for diving. And I, and I didn't think that was severe. He brushed Grimaldi, but nothing else. Just to add to the drama of uh, the bookings, it's a, a suspension for Grimondi from the second leg as well. So the man that would have gone in to the back line, maybe in Keown's position, won't be playing in Spain. Now, uh, as you can see, we're restarting with a free kick for the challenge by Grimondi. It's touched by Flavio. Flies up off the Arsenal wall, out comes Seaman.
Well, they can't strike them. There's absolutely no doubt about that. That great power in it. Look at Emmanuel Petit hobbling away after the ball strikes him. But no one should consider that this game is slipped back Nassau's favour. It's never easy against ten men. Arsenal are going to have to play well and work hard to make it count. All right. Dixon. And towards Thierry Henry, who couldn't take it. Well, there's nothing like feeling hard done by to galvanise you a little, and I'm sure the Spanish league leaders feel that now. Really, he's lost one of his attacking uh, avenues. So, uh, doesn't have to. It's not like having a defender sent off. Over Mars. Marsville have got more than the uh, last quarter of the game against ten men. Overmars. Well, he might have gone offside. Mackay. We've got to be careful, Arsenal, particularly tackling-wise, Mark, because there's absolutely no doubt that any contact made, any iffy challenges, that they'll be going to ground. Arsene Wenger's response to the situation with the extra man to get Kanu ready. Well, I just saw Dennis Bergkamp over at the touchline just chatting to the bench as the game was going on a little earlier, and I don't know whether he's... hasn't completed a game yet, I don't think, has he, Dennis Bergkamp, since his return? Whether it was him or whether it was some This is, of course, else. Mark Overmars' first start yeah. since uh, January the 3rd when he did uh, damage to an ankle against Sheffield Wednesday. So he's also a candidate to be replaced. Flavio offside against Mackay. Arsenal can make their change. No. <laughs> the uh, players in a hurry to get going again. It's not spotting that Kane was ready. of course, and was hit in the wallet for that from the African Nations Cup, where he got to the final, but was uh, responsible in that cruel way of penalty shootouts. And Nigeria losing to Cameroon. It's a Cameroon goalkeeper, incidentally, Songo, who's playing tonight, wasn't in the Cameroon squad, really, for the first time for a long time for a national competition. Kanu. Henri, out comes Songo. Well, that's a threat, isn't it? We haven't seen much of it second half, but certainly Henri's pace in behind is always going to threaten. Kanu wins it back. And it's just outside the area. And then Nivet, all African there. Well, he picks him up because he knows that he's just hung a leg out. I think Nybeck thought a card might come out there for that. No intent in playing the ball, all he was wanting to do was bring Cano to the ground. Arsenal, you feel in some need of a third goal. And over. Great ball in, absolute peach of a cross, great delivery. Sounds easy that it's a simple header, but they're caught short at the back post. Free header, two yards out. Confident player at the moment, Thierry Henry. You wouldn't expect him to miss it. Wonderful delivery. Has a little look for T. It's a beautiful cross.
So another twist to this fascinating tale. Silvino's back pass, Seaman just having to change direction. Can't <laughs> improbably kept that in. So Nybet was punished for the uh, foul on Kanu, who's already made uh, an imprint. Going to be a change. Toru Flores gives way to Fernando. It's a healthier scoreline for Arsenal. Flavio. He's just got to keep his emotions under control, referee recognising that. Flavio to take the free kick. Easily met by Grimondi. character Fernando uh, you don't have to be careful you just wonder how the Deportivo react man to losing the third do they go and are they on the pitch I know it's difficult for the coach are they on the pitch thinking well we need to go here and maybe they should be saying hold on a minute 3-1 okay we have an away goal a quick goal if it stays like this in our own ground might just give them a great chance but whether to lose another and go 4-1 down then you just wonder so Again, now they have now they have the balance in that. What they do? Do they try to look for one, or do they just protect it and not go for one though? Oh, he's on a hat trick. Has it been made up yet? <laughs> Only the strength of Maro Silva serving Deportivo well. Kia. T. Winning it back. And, uh, joyous juggling from the Arsenal point of view. Jungberg. Garnu. Petit, time to shoot. And given that amount of time, Andre beats the ground with a bit of frustration. Yeah, he's better than that, isn't he? Never really in control of the shot at all. One touch. Never really controlled it, got over it. But his delivery here was much better. Look at the way Omri comes in, totally unmarked. Flores again, I think, was a player at the back post. They just stood and admired the cross. <laughs> really didn't do an awful lot. Victor. Mara Silva. Fernando Dixon in too much of a hurry, though. So Arsenal two up in half, half time. First half remembered for the flow of the football. A stormy affair at the start of the second half. A disputed penalty. It's converted by Jalminia. He then got himself sent off. Bookings for Keown and Grimondi, they won't play in the second leg. Or, of course, with well, Jalminia. And against the ten men, Arsenal regaining their two-goal advantage. Still the best part of 20 minutes to go to improve on that. Convinced of Lujny as a centre back. More renowned, of course, as a, a right back. Yeah, I know. More Galloper down the right hand side, but he hasn't been able to dislodge Lee Dixon in the way that uh, Silvino seemed to have seen off Nigel Winterburn. That's not for lack of effort on Winterburn's part, I can assure you. The 
of time. Pointed out before this season that this is a somewhat a transitional time for Arsenal, but they are expected to compete and gather silverware along the way. No real breathing space for regrouping the team for Arsene Wenger. I'd ask you to give us a call for your vote for man of tonight's match. 9 I'll be an Arsenal player. <laughs> <laughs> Expectation that Henri might have chased that, and I think Henri would have an arm in apology. That wasn't the anticipation that the touch deserved. Victor, Manuel Pablo, Flavio. taking it off. And, uh, Mackay showing the movement, he didn't get the ball that time, but a warning for the Arsenal defenders of what he might be able to contribute in front of his home supporters in a week's time. But it is Mackay, comes to the end of his evening's work, he's been pretty much the uh, lone man through the centre, he's replaced by another striker, Pauletta, also an international with Portugal. against Henry was making movement back towards the halfway line. Close one. Renato went from level to drop very deep. That might have been the thing that confused everyone. Flavio. I think the big, the good thing for Arsenal, Martin, is I've not seen anything here tonight that suggests to me that Arsenal can't score over there as well. And I think if you're Terry Henry and you're going to face the Nato again, and now you're thinking, my goodness, give me another shot at least to and burn them away with my pace. Grimaldi. Much done by Petit. Side, no hat trick this time. I you know, thought it was just off, certainly from the angle we're sitting at. We're not it's dead in line as I thought as the ball was headed through. It was just fractionally off. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad decision at all. Uh, job done. Comes off with 15 minutes left. And on comes the player that Deportivo will know. Uh, Plenty about from his time with Sevilla and Real Madrid, the Croatian Davo Šuker. And recently captain Croatia against Spain. Petit. There on the Shuka, painful yeah. arrival. Well, just arms that go around, just catch them with the fingers as they both spin to get under the ball. The team really making up the numbers for a moment. Yeah. Deportivo. Cano, can he stride away here? Oh, he's oh, fooled the goalkeeper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's waited a long time to 
was his last Arsenal goal, which was the one that completed that extraordinary hat-trick back in October at Stamford Bridge. What a way to do it. Well, sometimes, Ross Fury, this is brilliant. Oh, show me it again, please. Bad mistake here from Deportivo yet again, but he doesn't touch the ball, look. Whoops. <laughs> Buy a ticket, son. <laughs> <laughs> what a goal. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, he's gone. Brilliant. What a finish. Songo left with egg on his face by the elasticity of the Nigerian who's gone 15 Arsenal appearances without scoring but reminds you of what he can do in front of goal in uh, an extraordinary way yeah, it's beginning to look a very very good night for Arsenal here is Kanu and they've conceded to Deportivo since Jalminia was sent off Petit. Still more than ten minutes left. Bergkamp. It's a corner. <laughs> Canu has his own personalised uh, crowd reaction. Well, they're going to sleep. Spaniards. Petit! <laughs> Trying to take advantage of that. Arsenal could put this tie to bed if it isn't already there, Mark, you have to say. Ten minutes or so to go. It was a great opportunity to pinch another one here. This is a great effort, they just don't close them down. Audacious attempt here. Well, he needed to get some revenge on a, a Cameroon goalkeeper, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> the only thing that was lacking from Cameroon's point of view, it wasn't the one that stopped his penalty in the African Nations Cup final. But the message will get there. He's had a great contribution, Cano. He was the one who, with his first touch, won the ball back, earned the free kick on the edge of the box. That uh, Petit delivered for Henri to score number three, gets number four. So he's a more than played his part. I actually thought he was unlucky at the left out, Martin. He played very well against Southampton here. Could easily have had a hat trick on the day. Opinion shared by Arsene Wenger, incidentally. Obviously, it wasn't good enough, but uh, Arsenal do have the resources. We often talk about uh, what Manchester United can do in permanent uh, their attackers. And Arsenal able to bring on Kanu and Shuka. They go to Aston Villa on Sunday, which is uh, a pretty daunting fixture, John Gregory was here tonight, whether he stayed to the last ten minutes, I'm not sure. Probably seen enough. There's no doubt the sending off has influenced the game, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind about that. Substitution was made, Dennis Bergkamp, again, enough done. Oh, no, not yet. was uh, prepared to go off, but Parler wasn't ready to arrive. <laughs> no shirt on. One of those uh, got the tracksuit top on, but not the shirt. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Here's Kanu. That was Donato. Kanu actually uh, was penalised for going down theatrically here against uh, Southampton, but I think he was taken this time. No, he doesn't have. You can see the follow through from Donato. Donato has left a calling card. Ray Parler has the number 15 shirt. But Arsene Wenger might just be reassessing this before he gives the hook. Bergkamp, because... Well, Bergkamp would fancy the free kick, wouldn't he? Mm. The right sort of angle for the right foot. Just hold it a minute, he's saying, no, no. I think Arsene Wenger has sussed out that Dennis wants to take this. Mm. He looks really shaken up, too. I don't know whether it's his knee, but I know he get caught. He looked to get caught in the ankle area, but I don't know whether it twisted the knee as he went over. The referee says, uh, do you want to make the substitution? Arsenal say no. 
Ball and Hitter. The scene is set for Bergkamp. Deflected! Five for Arsenal. Get off, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, now he can go off. The number ten is up. His last kick via an unwitting deflection off the Deportivo wall, giving Arsenal even more breathing space. Oh, get, well, this game's over, whether the tie is, it's going to take something special from the Spanish league leaders if they're going to turn this into a game <laughs> second leg. It's a hero's welcome to the bench. He wouldn't have been there if he'd come off. Well done, Ray Parler, for forgetting the shirt. Yeah. Kanu is uh, back into the fray. And my goodness, they paid a heavy price to Portivo for Jalminia. And he felt uh, maybe certainly the first booking was uh, harsh for the Brazilian, but his hot headedness and subsequent departure. They've collapsed, though, Martin, in all fairness. This doesn't look like a side to me that's going to hang on to a six point lead, that even though they have it. If, they could, if they're going to play and defend like they have done tonight. Well, I remember Arsenal getting seven in an away game, I think in Belgium a few years ago. This uh, would be one of the biggest since then. of the strength in the Arsenal squad when they're all fit. Had a sticky spell. The other side of the turn of the year. Familiar faces missing. And all the uh, departments of the team, including for a while the goalkeeper. Shuka. One for Dixon, two for Henri. Kanu and Bergkamp late on, putting a real sheen on the scoreline for Arsenal. It's been funny the two games we've seen, last round and this round, Martin, here at Highbury. I thought that previous round it was tight here until a player was sent off. It was exactly the same tonight, game was tight at 2-1, player off and then Arsenal really made the extra man pay. They have done on both occasions now. Silvino. Hours. Season campaigner, a lot of players in the blue and white of Deportivo with impressive CVs. They don't want to be remembered for this particular night, though. Donato. Too impulsive then, free kick to Arsenal. The man of the match is uh, Thierry Henry, from uh, your votes. And Brett Collins from Bournemouth will have a Thierry Henry shirt as his prize. Well done to Brett. Six successive away defeat for Deportivo La Coruña. With this mean they're going to have to lean heavily on their fine home form. The form that's taken them to the top of the Primera Liga in Spain. There is a picture that tells a story. Half an hour ago it looked so much rosier. Goal back, Arsenal looking less than secure. Game was well and truly on. Territory. Second leg, a week's time. 
the uh, old days of the gap of uh, two weeks. The UEFA the Cup comes thick and fast now through the month of March. And it looks as though Arsenal are going to play a full part throughout the month. Barring a collapse in the north of Spain in a week tonight. Well, by a week tonight, our stats men and you will have told us when the last time Arsenal lost a four goal advantage in Europe, if ever. He's been asking Arsene Wenger if he's ever lost it in his European experience, but uh, be careful that it's not cut back. Outside, the flag has gone up. Against Victor. An eventful evening in North London. Oh, absolutely. Should point out, they're singing his name at the moment. Patrick Vieira will be back for the second leg. At least is a free from a suspension for the second leg. Be, uh, fascinating to see what sort of side Arsene Wenger puts out at Phillip Park on Sunday. Thursdays and Sundays really are work dates for Arsenal in this month. Pretty strong one with the answer. That was Fernando's yeah. uh, challenge. It's generally fractionally, always those look worse when you see them like that. And I think it was a genuine attempt to get the ball just beaten to it fractionally by Lee Dixon. seen as a booking for him Flick headed on by Shuka Kanu! Oh, somebody <laughs> had to go hunting it, but no wonder he didn't claim it the first time. Such was the venom in the volley. Oh, it's a lovely little cushion header from Davos Suka, first of all. But well, if he'd have wanted that a yard either side of the goalkeeper, that would have been number six. Beautiful strike. There will be four extra minutes. Team. Offside, Shuka. In a way, Andy, it's summed up what uh, Arsenal have been about this season. They're, they're not rock solid defensively. No. They haven't had too many clean sheets, but they do have uh, so much variety in their attacking play. I remember, uh, opponents tonight lead the Primera Liga in Spain by six points as well. I know Mugs, Martin, I don't think anyone's trying to say that at all. This has been pretty good performance, but I don't think that Deportivo La Coruña at this particular moment of the season are at their best. I think if you'd have faced them four months ago, it might be a different prospect. Dixon. Shuka. Where's he going? Nowhere in the end. Shuka to try the volley from that position with one or two party pieces coming out in the closing stages. Fernando. Just think 
certainly at training grounds up and down the country tomorrow. The, uh, the players will be trying that canoe shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it. <laughs> Fair enough, when you see it again, it doesn't look like it does an awful lot either. No, that's the thing. You know, they're just so good just to say that I'm going to the here. <laughs> they just said, oh, well, I'll just let it run and tap it in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Here he is. Parler. Dixon goes outside of him, but Parler into Canu's feet. And turns to play it back to Songo, beaten five times tonight by Arsenal. Dixon, of course, had a testimonial here back in December against Spanish opposition. And it's almost been a testimonial for Arsenal tonight, collectively. Petit. Oh, that's up in the air. And Pablo and Manuel, Manuel Pablo rather, and... Uh, Shuka trying to locate it as it dropped down the goalkeeper, the defender able to come away. Kia. Jungberg. Given to Portivo's impressive record in their own Riazzo Stadium, Arsenal needed to make home advantage count tonight, and my goodness how they've done that. Particularly after Jalminia, the Deportivo penalty scorer, who pulled it back to 2-1, had been sent off. Lee Dixon started it, and Kanu and Bergkamp wrapped it up with two from Thierry Henry. First episode of this two-part story completed, second and concluding chapter in Spain next Thursday. That's where it started with Lee Dixon's goal. Terrific night for Arsenal, the thoughts of Alan Smith and Graham Sunes very shortly. And also highlights from Italy tonight where Leeds were in action against Rome. That's terrific, isn't it? I'll watch that all night. A five-star performance from the Gunners that we'll look back on next. It must be one of Arsenal's best ever nights in Europe to beat the Spanish league leaders by that scoreline. Could you have hoped for that? Oh, you hope always uh, that you win the games, but of course we uh, didn't think that we would win 5-1. But it, uh, I still think it's a difficult side and uh, uh, of course the sending off of Germania was a turning point in the game after that. They, it was very difficult for them physically, but they are very good going forward. I'd always hoped that you could score goals, but as well that they can score. Yes, they will argue, I'm sure, that the sending off was the turning point for them. It was 2-1 at the time. Yes. Uh, were they unlucky, do you think? They were unlucky, but uh, I, I didn't see well, but I think he had a bad reaction, uh, Jalminia, and he was involved in one or two occasions before. And, uh, of course, with 10 men, it, uh, men, it became difficult as well because we had uh, uh, some uh, good offensive players on the bench that could put one more strike on, and uh, after that, it, it made the difference. But... Uh, even with 5-1, I'm uh, not telling you tonight that you are through because you never know how it will happen over there and uh, it's such a good side that you have to be cautious. You are being very cautious, but you also missed two good players in Grimondi and Kion for the second leg. But how pleased were you tonight with uh, the likes of Thierry Henry with these two goals? Dennis Bergkamp uh, played very well, didn't he? And Kanu came on and scored a, a special goal. Yes, we, we, uh, we know that uh, uh, Thierry Henry is improving from game to game and uh, he scores headers now, what he didn't ever do before, and uh, I, I think he, he can still improve a lot because uh, sometimes uh, uh, he has such a potential that you would deem always to be perfect, but we have a uh, great potential up front now because he's improving. Dennis is back and Kanu is there and Shuka as well. He's a great player, so everybody's back. We missed everybody uh, with Overmars as well, all together for six weeks, and that was too much.